Some people rate movies, others rate restaurants, but Ted Burland of Chicago rates something much more unusual. See how the panel rates as they try to figure out Ted Burland's occupation on What's My Line? <laughs> and now let's meet this week's panel, Snoopy Sales! Elaine Joy, the amazing Preston, Arlene Francis, and the host of One My Line, Larry Clark. Good den, all bodies. Hello, Elaine, welcome back to the program. Thank you very much, Larry. Krauss Preskin, welcome to the panel. This is an experience. I've never sat on this side of uh, any panel in my life. Yeah, but um, listen, we're on your, on your good side. Are you going to just sort of psych us all out or no. what? No, you know, people wonder because I was banned for a few years from playing uh, blackjack in Vegas, but I don't use this ability in everyday life in any way. And this is, I'm going to really just enjoy the game today. I hope that I, thank God I got someone on my left who really is the past master. Oh, I don't oh, know. Well, let's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm worth nothing, right? No, never. You will never see the day. He's doing good. He guessed who I was when I won. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see if he can guess what the next one is. Would our first challenger enter and sign in, please? Joe Schenker. Where are you from, sir? I'm from New York City. Okay. Panel, Joe Schenker is concerned with this do-it-yourself kit. Can we get a shot of that? There we are. In a few minutes, we're going to demonstrate what one can do with it, but first the panel is going to have to figure it out. We'll now show the audience what this kit enables you to do. And let's begin the questioning with Arlene Francis. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Shaker, does it have anything whatsoever to do with communication? No. No. Oh. One down, nine to go, soupy. Let's start. <laughs> <laughs> There's the pass master for you. <laughs> does it have anything to do with the, uh, the appearance of an individual? <clears throat> In it, a manner it can. Of Would it be uh, 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 for women uh, rather than men? No. Two down, eight to go, Elaine. So it can be used by either the male or female? It can. It can. Um, is this, w this would not be considered a necessity to someone? Yes, it would not be considered. Okay. So this is uh, more of a luxury item. You could classify it as that. I would, no. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, do you use this product, or what that box contains, uh, do you come in contact with it physically? Yes. I mean, do you take what's in there out? You do. I see. And you do something with that? Yes. Do you use this yourself? You can. You can. Can you also use it with another person? If you want to. <laughs> this is where I'm getting lost. <laughs> um, it's a big deck of cards. <laughs> Uh, would I use this on my body? Would you use this on your body? No. Three down and seven to go, Kreska. I never knew you had pads like this. This is what I work with when I do audience readings, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm not getting anything. Uh, let's see. Uh, would you say, am I, am I to assume that this is a luxury item rather yeah. than a necessity? Right. Uh, is it visible to the uh, individuals about the person who is using it? Does it, does, does, yeah. Can it be visible? It yeah. can be. And, and it can be used by more than one person? Yes. Would, it, would we be correct in uh, perhaps suggesting that it would make the individual somewhat happier or more satisfied? I believe so. Are there, in the remotest sense, any health aspects to it or self-improvement aspects? Uh, no health. Four down and six to go, Arlene. What you put in there has to be put together. It is not all, of a, all uh, assembled. Obviously. Correct? It is not assembled, no, it is but not it does not have to be put together. Five down and five oh. to go soupy. Well, when you say that it's not used on your body, does that also mean it's not used on your face or head? Yes, that means that. It is not used on the body, soupy? You said it wasn't right. used on a body. 
I tell you, does anybody have Is a guess? Is he used? We're out of time. Does anybody have a guess? You paint your own dungarees with that kit. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Shaker is Director of Arts and Education for Grumbacker Incorporated, manufacturers of the Myplar Hyplar Acrylic Fabric Decorating Kit. There it is. Now then, Joe, would you tell us about the kit? There's a picture of it. It's a collection of Hyplar acrylic paints that are readily mixed with water and easily painted on denims, dungarees of all kinds. Will it uh, not wash off? With reasonable care, it could be laundered and will handle very well. Now, how much is this kit? That particular kit retails for thirteen fifty. There are lesser cost there are less costly kits put out by our company. What's the difference between this and the cheaper one? Basically it's just one varnish, a matte varnish less one content less and a cheaper case. Listen, I just soon have a cheaper case myself. <laughs> Listen, with and, the and, help a, and, a, and a, one brush. Okay, well, I, that's all right. With the help of String Bean Incorporated of New York, we have some painted dungaree fashions. So let's have a look. Could we open a curtain, Lloyd? Please. There we are. Now, who have we here? That's really terrific. That doesn't wash off now? That won't wash well, off, apparently. Well, what do you get it with your skin? You, uh, that will wash off with scrubbing. That will wash off. Now, those are really kind of spectacular colors, aren't they? They're bright and happy and very sunshiny. What is the first thing we're going to look at? Hmm? Well, um... Well, that, so, who's the first one? This Linda? Is a, yeah, this is Linda Semmel. Okay. Looking very, very cool in a multicolored hand painted jacket with matching short shorts. And what's that on the back? It's a green person painted on the back. It appears to be. Okay, thank you, Linda. Now, what's the next thing we're going to see? And here is Kathy White wearing the Inlock. Her denim jacket features the Marilyn Monroe theme, which is coordinated <laughs> in her jeans. This outfit <laughs> travels anywhere. Hey, thank you, Kathy. Now, what are we seeing? And now this is Marilyn Mendez in a brightly painted, tie-dyed, halter sundress with an appropriate midriff. Perfect for the beach and summer parties. Okay, thank you, Marilyn. Now, how difficult is it to paint that? Well, these costumes were all painted by a brother and sister team. The brother is nine years of age, <laughs> and a girl is oh, 11 oh years God. of age. And oh, they are oh, professional oh. artists named... Tamira and Wallada Koss, living here in New York City. Yeah, well, that means, I guess, if they're 9 and 11, that even an idiot could do it, and I'm going to give it a try. Well, Thank you very much for being with us all. That's my heart. We'll be back with more of What's My Line right after this message. Thank you, Chet. Before we get letters from enraged teenagers thinking that I'm calling children idiots because they can do that. <laughs> oh. I really mean grown-ups who are inept, of whom I number myself number one. And we join you. Okay. <laughs> now would our next challenger enter and sign in, please. Ted Berlin. Where are you from? I'm from Chicago. Okay, that's a good place. Right. Panel, Ted Berlin is an expert and authority on a human activity. We will show the audience what that human activity is. And let's begin with Elaine Joyce. Oh, goody. Uh, let me ask you something. Is this activity that you're an expert on, when people do it, is it done inside? Yes. And it can be done outside. Yes. Um, do people do it in in uh, uh, by them? Can they do it by themselves? Yes. And they can also do it with other people. In concert with other people, yeah. Right away, I'm tripped. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> I've just tripped down a flight of steps. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, is does this? Um, do you need some sort of an education to do this activity? I mean, is it it's something that doesn't come naturally? You don't really need an education to do it in, in a formal sense. Oh. One down and nine to go, Kreskin. A and a degree is not necessary in order to do this. No. Although people with degrees do it. Uh -huh. And this can be, is it, more, uh, is it done outdoors as much as indoors? As much as. 
Somewhat is. Well, when it's being done, mm -hmm. it's being done wherever that person is. Can it be done with an extremely large group of people? Yes. Would we have seen examples of this on television? <laughs> I expect we would have. I think so. In the news, would we have seen examples of this? More than likely. Is it necessary that you be heard in order to exercise this service? No. To aid to Donnie to go Arlene. Is the serve is this activity cerebral rather than physical? No, we no. have to say it was chiefly physical. Three down, seven to go, soupy. Do birds do it? <laughs> <laughs> bees do it. Well, up in, I got it. but up in Boston, does uh, educated beans do it? <laughs> no, they don't do it. So that's four down and six to go, Elaine. <laughs> For one lousy laugh, I got it. <laughs> Uh, is this, is this, uh, this activity reactive? Is it a reactive activity? Do you respond when you perform this activity? Who are you referring to? <laughs> I thought I was talking to you. <laughs> no, I mean the person who is doing this activity, and you're the expert on it. Uh, is it somebody reacting while they're performing the activity? I don't know. That's, that's a hard question to ask. Not necessarily. In fact, not really. Well, five I was thinking down. like an, an audience. Right. Somebody five an down audience. and five to go, Kreska. And they do not have to hear you in order to do this activity? I gather that was a question I uh, asked. Yeah. That's correct. They do not have to see him. In fact, they, people do this all the time without ever having heard of him. And he simply... Uh, knows he, more about it than anybody else. I, he knows more about this than anybody else. Mm -hmm. Can you observe this on Fifth Avenue? <laughs> Yes. You can observe it on Fifth Avenue, but you probably wouldn't know it was being done. <laughs> uh, let me ask you this. Would there be any uh, uh, legal factors involved in this? In the act itself, probably not. Six down and four nothing to go, Nothing illegal about it. Nothing illegal. Oh, no, nothing, nothing illegal. illegal. Now, you move some part of your body in order to do this. Yes. Well, um, that's a very, you do, Arlene, but that's such a dangerous line that I would urge you to abandon it. <laughs> really? Yeah. It has nothing to do with the breathing of pores and things like that, does it? No. No. Yes, yes it doesn't. Yes, it doesn't. Um, so we have to forget about the movement of the body. You, um... It has nothing to do, I can rule out that it has anything to do with that you're an expert on breathing. Yes, she can rule that out. Yeah. Rule that out. Are you an expert on um, uh, anything that happens from the neck up? Well, yes, yes it does. I think so. Yeah. And it also happens from the neck down? Hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, does it have anything to do with the hands? Somewhat. Somewhat. She so indirectly. You are using are all of your body when you do this. It's it no. all involved. It's all involved. Well, all the body. And uh, uh, it has nothing to do with thinking, sleeping, walking. Nothing to do with walking. Nothing to do with <laughs> laughing. Nothing to do with shaking. Does it have anything to do with the nervous system? Only indirectly, I would think. Seven down, We're three down to go, soupy. Did you, did you, did you say anything about walking? Yeah. yeah. Uh, is there a noise made when this is going on? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe I thought he was authority on belching. Uh, well, it may be. Eight down and two to go. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, I'm hanging around a radish stand. Uh, uh, <laughs> does this, uh, should I rule out the fact that this, is, this has something to do with your diet? What's Should you rule that out? No. No, that's what it is. You're a dietitian, someone who is an expert on what you eat is what you are, or something like that. Well, I tell you, that's not really right. it. So it's nine that you cannot rule out that it has to do with what you are eating. Yeah. But I you haven't quite hit what it is yet. So, Kreskin, we're to you now. Does it have to do with... How did it get off me? <laughs> <laughs> I was zeroing right in there. That's great. Nothing. Does, that have, does that have to do with the choice of food and the particular appeal of, of buying food? In the market? Huh? Such as what, what appeals to a person? Mm. It isn't really that. In uh -huh. fact, sometimes it's the exact opposite. Yeah. What he's an expert digestion? on is dieting. Well, that's just dieting. Dieting. No, she didn't say dieting. I said dieting. I said dieting.
It has to do with your diet, and dieting are entirely different things. My diet right now makes me fat, but it is not dieting. And this, for example, is a very copy of the book which he's compiled. He just written it, and it's called Rating the Diets with the Editors of Consumer Guide. Now, why did you write a book, Rating Diets? Because there have been so many um, books out on specific diets, and there's been so many uh, diets that have been passed around from hand to hand that... Uh, we thought it's time to take a good objective look at it and see what are the better ones and what are the dangerous ones. Now, what was the criteria you used in, in rating them? Um, we took a look at the uh, objective criteria. We tried to get the emotions out of it, such as, was it well-rounded? Mm -hmm. uh, did it watch calories, but did it also watch ingredients of the diet, such as, was it high in protein? Mm -hmm. Was it low in carbohydrate? Did it watch the kind of fats? Mm -hmm. For instance, was it careful about saturated fats? Mm -hmm. And using those criteria, we came up with a rating system, a star system. So what four one? stars were the best. What one? Um, it's a family of diets, actually. The four-star diets are those that come out of uh, Norman Jolliffe here in New York, uh, the so-called Prudent Diet, the New York City Diet, the Weight Watchers Diet, the uh, Red Book Wise Woman's Diet. Those are all the best. And what's the worst? The worst diets are those that emphasize one food, such as a water diet, or a banana diet, or an ice cream diet, right. or one that has a high ice cream diet. diet. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, they, if you're on there for two well, weeks... Listen, I think anybody, about since this is a diet-conscious country, it might do everybody, might serve everybody quite well to get a load of this book, get a look at it, and, uh, and check out what you're doing before you're doing. It's called Rating the Diets, and Your Health Might Depend on It. Thank you for being with us on What's My Line. We'll be back with more of What's My Line after this message. I read in this book how I can lose five pounds, get a haircut. <laughs> okay, it's time now for the special feature of What's My Line, the appearance of our mystery guests. Are your blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, sir. Then would our mystery guest enter and sign in, please. Okay, panel, we'll go one question at a time. Fate for all prevails, and let's begin the questioning with Arlene Francis. Thank you, Larry. Uh, mystery guest, are you best known for your work in television? That's right. <laughs> Whoops. Soupy? What? Oh, is that because uh, you, you have been on a show of your own? Not exactly. Many shows with different people. Mm. Elaine? Uh, have you been on a, a regular... Uh, on a series as a co-star then, let's say. You got it. <laughs> Reskin? <laughs> Could one of the series have been with uh, Danny Thomas? No. Arlene? Is it a uh, comedy series? Only when they laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Soupy? <laughs> was, was it, was it, uh, was it a, a series, was it with Dean Martin? No. Elaine? Um, it was a, um, was it a, uh, a, a half-hour situation comedy? Right. Greskin? Uh, did you play a, um, mm, I'm kind of stumped. I have, I'm trying to think of the difference. Half-hour situation comedy is? Right. Uh, did you play a, uh, lawyer or physician on the series? No. Arlene? Uh, is it um, a part on the Mary Tyler Moore show? No. Soupy? Is the show still running? Yes, in the reruns. Oh, in the real. Forward and backward. <laughs> Elaine? It's Bela Lugosi. I'm going to take a guess. I tell you, we're out of time. All right. Is it Maury Amsterdam? <laughs> That's it. That's out of nowhere. Got a little ESP there. We Maury, worked together a long time. Me, you were following me, or I followed you in the Harris a, a, a time back in our schedule. Yeah, we they told me about you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing now, Maury? A little bit of everything. I have a new book coming out. Really? Yes, I have a... Uh, <laughs> I wrote a, a cookbook for drunks. It's called Betty Cooker's Crock Book. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. 
strangely <laughs> enough, Arlene, it's not a gag. I, I, I started it as a gag, and then traveling around the world, my wife and I, I found so many marvelous recipes made with liquor. I said, why not? So that's what I, I've done. I've collected 300 recipes made with booze, and they're marvelous. I have things like Bloody Mary soup, bourbon <laughs> stew, oh made by God. a stew named bourbon. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a wild look. I think have it's going to be great. Have you, no, he hadn't tried. Listen, you... No, I don't drink. I don't drink, smoke, gamble, or run around with women. Lloyd's of London are laying ten to one. I'm dead. <laughs> Somebody asked me, they said, how can you write a book about liquor if you don't drink? And I said, I know a lot of guys who manufacture brassieres never wore one. <laughs> Would you say that given any subject matter at all, you could come up with a joke on that? I've been lucky so far, yeah. All right, I got one, and I don't think you can do it. I've tried to trap Maury for years on it. Right. Elbows. A joke on elbows? Yeah, an elbow joke. Well, you've got to tell a joke about a bar. A guy is standing in the bar, and he's leaning on his elbow. It slips off, and he's laying there with his head like this. The bartender says, what do you have? He says, give me a scotch and sofa. He says, you're so drunk now, you can't lift your head. He says, all right, give me a haircut. <laughs> I'll go with you, Maury. Thank you hey, for being with us on What's My Life. Good luck with the book. We'll be back with more What's My Life right after this message. Okay, we're back. Arlene, how's your show going? Well, I, I hope it's going to go all right. What's it's the name of it? Don't Call Back, but that doesn't go for you. Oh, <laughs> shucks. Is Tony really a good director, Tony he, Perkins? Tony Perkins is a marvelous director. He, he likes it better than acting, you know. He thinks that directing is much more exciting. He's kind of bored with acting. I'll go with him. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Wow. Ted Gould speaking for What's My Life? A Mark Goodson, Bill Cosman production. Miss Francis Gowns by Bonwit Keller. This program is recorded.